Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to, to thank the organizers for this nice opportunity to present my work to you all. I am Julio Leite, and this work was done in collaboration with uh, Alex Diaz in Brazil, Jose Valle in Spain, and Carlos Vaquera in Mexico. I am currently a postdoc at UF ABC in Brazil, uh, but when this work was done, I was at IFIC in Spain with Jose Valle, and I spent uh, a little bit more than one year there, um, and I'm just back to Brazil now. So I will talk about reloading the action in a 3-3-1 setup. So first of all, I need to tell you what I mean by a 3-3-1 setup, okay? So 3-3-1 models are gauge extensions of the electronic sector of the standard model. So it's, instead of SU2 cross U1, what we have now is SU3 cross U1. And the electric charge is given by uh, the electric charge is given by this operator over here. So the three lepton doublets of the standard model are then promoted to triplets. So it's the fundamental representation of SU3L. And uh, in order to complete the representation, we need to add a new field, which in this case is precisely the right-handed neutrino or the conjugate of it. So in the fundamental representation of our model, we already have uh, right-handed neutrino. It doesn't need to be added as a singlet of the extended gauge group. For the quarks, however, things work differently. Uh, for the first two families, they transform as anti-triplets, while the third family uh, comes as a triplet of SU3. And this is necessary to ensure a normally cancellation for the, for the gauge extended uh, symmetry. And uh, this, uh, by doing this in this way, uh, this predicts that the number of uh, families, fermion families in the model is exactly three. So in other words, in our model, the anomaly cancellation is not achieved within each family as in the standard model, but it takes into account all the three families to, to cancel the anomalies. Um, as the, in the standard model, the right-handed fields or the right-handed right uh, fermion fields they come as singlets of SU trio. So we have all these guys here as uh, singlets. And look, in the in pink here, we have uh, the new uh, quarks as well. Uh, also, in this uh, model, we can define a, a B minus L symmetry, which has a non trivial realization, which is given by that. So the B minus L symmetry here is like uh, a residual symmetry uh, in our. In our model, it's like the electromagnetic symmetry uh, generated by this, and this also will come as a residual symmetry of the the model. And uh, in this model, it's interesting that uh, the B minus L symmetry is already anomaly free, so it can be promptly uh, promoted to local. Um, as we are talking about the gauge extension of the standard model, the gauge sector has new uh, vector bosons, which are given by this. And for the scalar sector, we need at least three triplets to break the symmetry spontaneously and also to generate mass for all the, the fermions in the model. So the symmetry breaking, as I was saying, uh, is uh, the symmetry breaking pattern takes two stages, uh, two different steps. First, uh, this three, three, one, a uh, gauge group is broken when the third component of phi tree gets a VEV down to the standard model uh, gauge group. And then when the first and the second components of uh, phi one and phi two get a VEV, we break the standard model gauge group. Uh, when we write down the full Lagrangian, we notice that uh, it displays almost an automatic pg queen symmetry. And uh, if you just forbid two operators, these two here, we have the symmetry uh, appearing in our model. Um, for the second operator, it's interesting to notice that uh, it generates uh, neutrino masses. However, one of the neutrinos is necessarily massless and the other two uh, degenerate and have masses proportional to the web of the second uh, triplet, which is of order of the electric scale. So we don't have a suppression mechanism for neutrino masses here. So it uh, it's another, gives us another motivation to implement the, uh, to impose the PQ symmetry so that we can generate neutrino masses properly in a suppression with a suppression mechanism 
And at the same time, with this PQ symmetry, you can uh, implement the PQ mechanism to solve the strong CP problem and also have a, a dark matter candidate as the axon. So how do we do that? We do it in a minimal way by extending the model with a scalar singlet, sigma, sigma that gets a VEV at a very large uh, energy scale and it will host the axion as in the invisible axion uh, scenarios that we know of, uh, similar to them. And also we need to add a vector like uh, neutral atoms, which will help us with the generation of neutrino masses. They will be actually the mediators of neutrino masses as we show you later. Okay, so this is uh, the field content of our model. So we have the fermions here and the scalars. And uh, let's have a look at this column here. So the fields that get a VEV are the ones in red here. And you see this column tells us the uh, B-Manzel charges of this field. So the fields, uh, they are not charged on a B-Manzel, which means that when they get a VEV, they do not break the symmetry and neutrinos are then necessarily direct fermions in our model. So, and in the third column, we show the PQ symmetries, uh, the PQ charges of all the fields in the model uh, parameterization. Um, so the PQ symmetry is indeed the anomalous as it needs to be. And we calculate the PQ, uh, the QCD anomaly coefficient. And it's basically the PQ charge of the scalar singlet sigma here, okay? And uh, from that, from this anomaly coefficient and uh, the anomaly associated with it, we can implement the uh, well-known PQ mechanism to solve the strong CP problem. Let's have a quick look now at the fermion masses in the model. For the quarks, we can write down these terms here. And when the fermions get the VEV, we can write down two mass matrices. So we have this block diagonal mass matrices where the, the first or the upper three by three blocks correspond to the standard fermions. And then we have the extra fermions that are necessary or the extra quarks that are necessary to complete the, the representation, the SU3 representation, the triplet representation. Okay. So you see here that uh, the standard fermions do not mix with the, the new fermions. And this is due to the b manzel symmetry in the model. And uh, because of that, the CKM matrix is unitary, even though we have new fermions with uh, charges similar to the standard model quarks. Uh, and the new quarks will get masses at the scale W, which is the 3 to 1 scale. So it can be as low as 10 TV. So there will be heavy quarks. For the leptons, we can write down four different operators. The first one, when phi2 gets a VEV, we get masses for the charged leptons. And for the neutrinos, we have the other three. So and uh, when the scalar fields get a VEV, we can write down this Dirac mass matrix, matrix here in these uh, faces. And uh, by looking at it, and also by remembering that uh, V sigma is the PQ scale, so it's much larger than the other two, the electroweak and the 3T1 scale, we can implement, uh, we have here a structure of the, the CISOL type, okay? But this is a Dirac CISOL mechanism. And then by diagonalizing it, we find that the light neutrino get masses given by this expression. And uh, what's interesting here is that uh, neutrino masses are then uh, depend on the three scales of the model, the electroweak, the 3 3 one and the PQ symmetry. And neutrino masses uh, are small if the ratio between the 3 3 one scale and the PQ symmetry, uh, PQ symmetry scale uh, is very small. So it suggests that new physics associated with the 3T1 uh, gauge group must take, take place at a relatively low scale W here. Okay. So for example, if we take V1 of order 100 GeV, W of order 10 TeV and uh, V sigma of 10 to 12 GeV, we have uh, consistent neutrino masses uh, 0.1 EV, for example, with uh, reasonable Yukawa couplings. Um, let's see now some of the axion properties. Okay, so the axion in our model has components over the all the scalars. So the the first scalar phi one, you have the component and the two and the three, the three scalars here, and then also over the uh, scalar singlet. 
and this is uh, this constant, uh, uh, the the normalizing uh, normalization constant here. Um, the profile of the accent can be written down in terms of the, the charges, the PQ charges. And as usual, you can write down the PQ charges in terms of the valves, okay? And here we parameterize in terms of two angles. So theta is given by this, which is suppressed by the 3 to 1 scale. So theta here is a small angle in our model for these valves that we considered, while beta is the usual angle in um, in the DFSC model or even to Higgs doublet model. So it's the ratio between these two valves that make up the electric scale. In our model, the, the fermions, the standard fermions coupled to axions through phi one and phi two. So in this limit where theta is small, the couplings between the axion and the, and the standard fermions are proportional to cosine of beta and sine of beta. And this is very, very similar to what happened in the DFSZ model, okay? But also we have new fermions that couple to axion a la KSV, KSVZ model. But here, the coupling of the new fermions to the axion is proportional to sine, sine of theta. And this is very small. So this interaction is very suppressed. So in the end, we can see our model as a as a hybrid construction, a hybrid DFSZ, KSFZ construction. However, the DFSZ-like features are much more prominent due to this hierarchy. Uh, the charges, they obey this, they satisfy this relation here, which comes from the potential term. Uh, this one, this is the non-trivial term in the potential. And uh, in the limit where the PQ or the V sigma scale is much larger than the others, we have that the axion is projected basically into the singlet, and then we have an invisible axion as expected. Okay, so we can have a look now at the axion coupling to photons, which is a nice feature of the model. So to do that, we calculate this anomaly coefficient uh, associated with the electromagnetic symmetry that remains conserved. And in our model, it will give uh, this value, which is minus four thirds times the PQ charge of sigma. So the axion to photo coupling, which is generically given by that, has this model dependent part and the model independent. And in our model, the model dependent part is given by minus four thirds, as I said, and it has the same sign as the model independent. So it uh, implies an enhancement of the axion coupling when compared to the most popular scenarios. So. For example, if we consider the DFSZ type one or two, or even the KSFZ models, we have that this ratio, the model dependent part, which is the ratio between this anomaly coefficient and the QCD anomaly coefficient are given by that. So they, are, they have opposite signs to the, the model independent or they are zero or it is zero in the case of the KSFZ construction. So the, the couplings to photons are then given by something of order one here, this uh, overall term in front or order two. And in our case, we have 3.3. .3, so it's, uh, it shows an, an enhancement which can, which can be tested experimentally. And this is the consequence of the gauge structure of the model of how the action is embedded in the 3.3.1 setup. So I will show you here the, this plot, which shows the action coupling to photons versus the axion mass and the axion decay constant. So for the, the FSC type one and type two, we have the predictions in orange and green. And for our model, with this ratio between the anomaly coefficients, we have the prediction in, in blue. And uh, the dashed lines are the sensitivities of experiments. So we see that our model can be more thoroughly tested uh, because of this enhanced GA gamma coupling here. So it lies within the sensitivities of uh, some experiments. So uh, I'll go to my conclusions now. So our model is a 3 one model that touches upon many problems, such as the number of fermion families, strong CP problem, dark matter, which can be axionic and neutrino masses. 
And uh, all the new gauge bosons, the fermions, get their masses around the 3 to 1 scale W. And uh, the neutrino masses are given by this relation here are proportional to a factor that depends on the three scales of the model. And this relation suggests that the new physics takes place at a relatively low 3 to 1 scale W, which can be as low as 10 TV. So that all the phenomenology associated with the 3 to 1 gauge structure uh, can, uh, are, are supposed to be to take place at a lower scale and can be tested. Uh, the model uh, is a hybrid DFSZ, KSFZ construction, but uh, it has DFSZ-like features that are more prominent. We have that the axon coupling to electrons uh, is enhanced. Uh, also in our model, we have that the domain wall number is one, so we are free from the domain wall problem. Another feature that I haven't uh, showed to you, but uh, it's also worth mentioning is that uh, we have flavor violating axial coupling to quarks, and this comes from the original gauge structure. And then we can set some, uh, can use some constraints to, to set a lower bound on the PQ symmetry here, the PQ symmetry scale. And finally, as I showed you in the, the last plot, the axial coupling to photons is enhanced in our model. So it lies within the sensitivities of uh, future experiments. So that's an uh, exciting feature. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, thank you.